in this video we're going to discuss whether the loss of volume 9 to 12 months after the hair transplant is really because of hair follicle desynchronization when it is very well known that human hair is asynchronous there is no synchronization between human follicles i wonder where this idea came from because even in the same follicular unit there will be hair which are in different phases of hair cycles and lastly even for a moment if we believe that desynchronization is to be blamed for the loss of volume after hair transplant we are missing the forest for the trees what about those 20 percent hair which were in the telogen phase when hair transplant was done will they not grow out four to six months after the hair transplant in the normal course of the hair cycle and therefore will they not negate the loss of volume because of desynchronization that is claimed to happen this false theory of desynchronization is based on misconceived logic that follicles in the scalp at the time of hair transplant are 100 percent in the anagen phase of the cycle which is far from the truth so hang on Well, if you're not familiar with the hair cycle, the human hair cycle, a brief revision will help before we go on to synchronization of hair follicles and whether synchronization of hair follicles is actually a concern which you need to take note of after hair transplant. So some of us will know that each hair in the scalp cycles about 10 to 20 times in an individual's lifetime. This life cycle of hair and its subsequent growth happens at a speed of about 1 to 1.5 centimeters each month. Hair is a living element which follows the follicle cycle with a duration of about 2 to 6 years. In humans, unlike other mammals that are subject to periodic change, this cyclic evolution of the human hair follicle cycle is not synchronous, each hair being independent of the other in its rhythm. A physiological loss of hair up to 100 strands each day is considered normal. The hair growth cycle has three phases, the anagen phase or the growing phase, the catagen phase or the shedding phase and the telogen phase which is also called as the resting phase. The cells of anagen hair have a high rate of mitosis that is that they divide rather rapidly and are amongst the most rapidly dividing cells in the human body. Hair growth occurs from the hair bulb which is located in the dermis. This lasts for about two to six years longer in women than in men. And then once this anagen phase is over, catagen phase takes over. Mitosis comes to a halt and apoptosis or programmed cell death reigns supreme. This is followed by an upward migration of the bulb which reaches the mid dermis. The hair shaft at the bottom gets clubbed and the catagen hair is now a telogen hair also called as club hair. This resting phase lasts three to four months on average. 20% of all hair are in this resting phase. 20% of hair are in the resting phase at the time of a hair transplant. During the telogen phase, the follicular sac that contains the bulb starts its upward journey towards the epidermis. This movement upwards occurs at the cost of the lower part of the follicle. The bulb soon assumes its typical club shape due to retraction of follicular sheaths. Once this upward migration is complete, the bulb projects outwards on the skin and gets mechanically dislodged over time. So it leaves the follicular seat where a new hair is now developing and life goes on. In the human, each follicle has its own inherent rhythm and thus this cyclical evolution is asynchronous in the human being. Very much unlike in rodents and mammals that molt hair or shed hair seasonally. This asynchronicity varies from one body part to the other. In the scalp at any given point, 80% of the hair are in anagen phase, 20% of the hair are in telogen phase and about 1% hair are transiting from the anagen phase into the telogen phase at any given time. However, during the course of the year, humans can experience two phases in which hair falls out into the telogen phase faster. This occurs in spring and is more pronounced in the fall. This rhythm seems to obey and submit to nature's cyclical phenomenon such as the length of the day and temperature in the various parts of the year. So coming to the crux of today's talk, what causes loss of volume 9 to 12 months after hair transplant? Is it really because of desynchronization? As we have already discussed, human hair follicle cycles are asynchronous. So we cannot blame desynchronization for the loss of volume after 9 to 12 months of a hair transplant. So what are the reasons? Number one, stopping medication after six months of the hair transplant when the result comes in. 
complacency on the part of the doctor and complacency on the part of the patient, thinking this is the final result and it's going to stay this way. The common marketing adage that hair transplants are permanent is responsible for this belief. No hair transplant is permanent. If baldness is progressing, your hair follicles, whether they are planted or native thinning hair, will continue to deteriorate. The human body itself is not permanent. So why do we expect that our hair will stay on till the end of time? So when we stop medication, the hair that have been benefited by it, mostly the native thinning hair, will revert back to their original state or even worse. And this is proven by the fact that some patients who do not take finasteride after hair transplant, though they may have a poorer result than in those who take finasteride, in these patients, there is no loss of volume 9 to 12 months after hair transplant. So this goes on to prove that most of the volume loss is because of cessation of medical treatment after a hair transplant. The second reason why hair transplant results deteriorate over time is because more than 3,500 grafts have been taken from the scalp donor. When we take 3,500 grafts, we are complying with the 1 is to 5, 1 is to 4 ratio. Whereas if we take more than that, 4,500, 6,000, we are taking it either over harvesting or we are taking it from the unsafe zone. So these hairs which are in the unsafe zone or the non-permanent zone will soon fall off. And lastly, because of improper selection of cases. When we are doing cases which are not meant to be subjected to a hair transplant, like diffuse pattern alopecia. So the claim that desynchronization is responsible for the loss of volume after hair transplant is all bull. It's a cock and bull story. The question of desynchronization of a hair transplant does not arise because desynchronization or synchronization is not a phenomenon seen in the human being. Human hair follicles are never synchronous to start with. So to summarize, human beings have scalp hair follicles that exhibit an asynchronized pattern of cycling with the growth and subsequent shedding of each follicle being independent of others around it, even in the same follicular unit. So when baldness is still progressive, it is not yet stabilized, especially in those who have baldness in the younger age groups. And when the doctor does not have the time or the inclination to chalk out a long-term plan for the patient's androgenetic alopecia, or if the patient is not motivated to stick to the plan, the result which was good to start with will soon fade away. This is natural. So to just blame hair synchronicity when it not even exists is just an excuse to cover up ill-conceived plans, improperly laid out plans for hair restoration in androgenic alopecia. Treatment of androgenic alopecia is not a one-time event. It is a continuum of surgical hair restoration, medical treatment over a long period of time, requiring many years of guidance and support on the part of the doctor. So the patient deserves a better plan, a better plan for his hair loss rather than lame excuses like hair desynchronization after hair transplant. Well, thank you for watching. If you have any question that comes to your mind, any clarification you seek regarding this talk or any matter that comes to your mind about hair loss or hair transplant, do let me know. I'll be there to help you. Have a nice day.